the stuff about um, royalties is that what what I have gathered from asking various people who are involved in radio stations is that the, the, the biggest um, excuse that they give for playing the type of content, for playlisting the type of content that they are playing is that that is what the people request. You know, that is what the people are asking for. And I would argue that as a commercial radio station, it is in your mandate to playlist what it is the people are, are, are requesting. Fine, I mean, me and my 10 friends might not necessarily be into the type of music, but what, what most of the hip hop community that I have interacted with failed to realize is there is a much broader demographic out there which might not necessarily be into whatever it is the blogs are pushing, whatever it is. So there's, there's this uh, um, struggle to sort of understand that, you know, what, what, what we may like, what we may listen to, is not what everyone else listens to. Firstly, because the programmers may not be exposed to what we're exposed to, and secondly, because they have this pressure to, to, to you, know, you know, keep the numbers up. It's all about the numbers, isn't it? So I think that's why, you know, the, the, the royalties are going mostly to international artists, because that's what that's, as you said, that's why it's getting playlisted, right? And it's playlisted because it's what the people are asking for. Uh, secondly, on the issue of, you know, what, what gets uh, played on radio, the, the, the type of content, would it, would, wouldn't you perhaps think that that's mainly because it's, it's what, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the early 90s, late 80s, we had the, the likes of, you know, um, X clan public enemy, that was what was big, right? Wouldn't you argue that perhaps the, the mass media, that that's what they were trying to push? This is just, you know, another thing to think about. Isn't it not because that's what, you know, some higher power, so to say, decided that this is what we are going to push, this revolutionary sound, you know? I don't know, perhaps it's you know, because there's someone that decides, isn't it? There's someone that definitely decides for you what uh, type of sound we are going to go with for the next five years, right? And then when that is no longer viable, then we, we find the next big thing. I do think that there, there is a group of people or entity or corporation that decides what gets played. I think that their agenda is to make money and capitalism and to keep the masses as dumb as they possibly can. Um, it's proven fact that uh, people like, uh, what's that dude's name again? Um, anyway, I'll get back to that. But that, there is a group of people who have an agenda. And of course, media is coupled with big corporations and with political parties. And the agenda is to make money. And they almost slipped when they used to play x clan and Public Enemy because they didn't know the power of hip-hop. They didn't know that like kids in Australia is going to put up their hands and be, I'm black and I'm proud and actually understand that they're descendants of the first people in Africa, you know? So they, they were like, oh damn, we better flip this around. Let's just sell negativity like the news does, you know? Like it's negative news that you get every day. Why? Why is there no stories about great things we do? Because that makes you think that there's just crap going on in the world, you know? So I do believe that there's a group of people uh, that decide that they will not play uh, conscious hip hop from anywhere in the world, you know, because their agenda is to to be pushing products to an unwilling uh, consumer, you know, and in a lot of cases. And if if you think that people are, are wanting this, um, I know a song, that's a train. Choo -choo 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 -choo. Why the hell do I know that song? Because when I when when I grew up during the days of apartheid, they played this crap over and over. You know, I put my blue shoes on. Why, why do I know that shit? You know, and so like you think that you you like choose to like this? Like they they decide what people choose to like by just repetitively playing crap as much as they possibly can. So I don't think that it's by fluke, and I don't expect that five years from now, as my five years has maybe been longer than yours. I've been waiting a long time for them to flip the script and give us something conscious. 
you know, but I, I don't believe that they will. Just again from a cold perspective of radio stations, radio stations have always been a big issue and music understandably is something that needs to be heard. You listen to music and uh, one of the only ways you can get access or the public can get access to your music is through radio stations and live performances. But I think something that we must also bear in mind in that business plan of ours for the future is that whereas you know, I get comment all the time the radio stations should be forced to play 80% local content or whatever. We know the community stations have to. Uh, but currently about 47% of all music played on all radio, radio stations is local. But here lies the rub. We used to beg radio stations to play our music. And we do all kinds of things, and I'm just going to put this out there to think about. For the last five, six, seven years, um, there's been a massive drive to try and force the radio stations to play something called needle time. And needle time is a form of royalty that goes to the performing artist rather than the composer uh, of, the, of the musical work. Um, now, here lies the rub. We beg the radio stations to play our music and then we penalize them for playing the music so it's something called needle time, which can amount to as much as 10% of their revenue in terms of health. And that's why there's this big fight. So needle time hasn't been very successful, unfortunately, from the radio stations. But the other thing is we all know that the way radio stations are going to broadcast in the future is going to be through live streaming. So you're going to be accessing radio stations from all over the world. So to force the local content on local radio stations really is not, I don't think, it's not going to get us too far. I agree with a lot of the sentiment of what Emil was saying in terms of control. So I assume speaking to the brothers what point. Yeah. Um, I think the world's changing a lot. Not changing in terms of the control of, 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 of capital, but in a globalized world, and I think maybe Adam can, being a media studies academic, am I correct? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, could you hold, could you hold? But um, can speak better to it than I can. But in terms of content and saying what we want to say and what is broadcast, whether it's something that's safe and me and my baby or something that's teaching us about our history or our ability to understand our society. I think that that's changed also with globalization because we've got so much more access. So whereas, you know, Pazzi is, you know, he was talking about his, you know, when I was this morning, why I heard that. We were in a situation where this country was ring-fenced, this country was isolated, this regime was brutal. Um, Songs, artists were banned, were controlled vigorously. Um, I think we, a lot of us um, had the experience of bringing albums or CDs into the country through the border, posted labels taken off white label shit so that you're not going to see what that is about, but which is speaking to our consciousness and uprisings and resistance in this country. That's not the case now, when you log on and you get it, what, what's happened with the Arab Spring rebellions and social networking. So I think if something sells, that is the, the criteria more for those in control. I don't, so I don't, I'm not down with this sort of conspiracy theory that <laughs> there are people, I think there were much more of that. We did have a brutal bond. We did have control, and we do have people right now who would like to control. But I think the prospects of controlling in an age of files shit, I, I, I actually think that terrain's changed a lot. If it's porn in itself and they can make money out, it's going to be porn. If it's hip hop, it's going to be hip hop. If it's going to be. Yeah. Of course, what the top out there. Yeah. Okay, we can go on with animal chair that discussion. <laughs> I just want to clarify, just flag that issue that, that Peter raised, the issue of, you know, everyone moving to streaming, and if all radio stations are going to be moving towards that, then it means we can access anything from everywhere. So you're saying that locally pushing for local content and getting that onto our airwaves is going to be undermined by that sort of bigger global picture. Can you just explain that? Because from where I'm standing, I'm thinking, if you can access, you know, anything from anywhere, whether it's, you know, radio from Beijing or, or, or the States or Radio 1, whatever, um, my thought would be that 
while the, what would make South African radio different from what you could hear from a radio station in Seattle, for example. Um, and surely I think that's an argument for pushing more indigenous content, more local content, because anyone from everywhere, if you want people to tune into Good Hope, for example, then there should be something special about that radio station. And Good Hope now is playing stuff you can hear anywhere else in the world, and if the internet makes that even more apparent, surely that's an argument for actually making local content um, more visible, more audible. There is a perception, unfortunately, out there that a local is not always that local. And people want to hear international repertoire or content or, you know, and as I say, it's a perception. And I think that is sort of what drives the commercial radio stations, the belief that if they only play local music, the local communities will not, will move away from them and they will lose their audience. Uh, so I think really, Adam, that's more or less the feeling that I get from the radio stations is if, if they played purely only local content, they wouldn't have an audience space anymore. But of course, if we are moving to a situation where everything is going to be streamed and assuming that broadband and digital divide, if that issue gets sorted out, if everything's available online, why should local or international audiences tune into a Cape Town radio station? It's got to be something unique. I might as well just tune into, like I said, a, you know, a BBC radio station or an American radio station. You know, my argument would be then. You know, if I don't have to be loyal to this particular station because they play this version of house which is available in that part of the Northern Hemisphere, then yeah, I have to offer something different whilst I'm going to tank.